number five and we'll talk about his activities at up capitol hill what are his involvements uh, i understand he's on several other committees and he's from the health background as well so good that we have him here we will talk uh, both um health we talk politics we talk all the other things that he's occupying in the capital of course let's take this breather then we come by we start our discussion <laughs> Princess Fatou Gevlo, of course, making her own contribution here on the Super Morning Show this morning. My guest is already in here. Uh, let me welcome the Honorable Representative of Lofa County District 5. Uh, let me say good morning, Honorable. Just twist the microphone to you some more. Okay. Good That's morning. Okay. Good, yeah. good morning. Good morning, Merlin. How are you doing? Pretty fine. Thank you. Um, so I like that um, your intro music. Took me way back. Oh wow! <laughs> Those days. <laughs> Those days, yeah. Uh, I feel more relaxing. I say thank you for the invitation, affording me to be in the studio today to speak to my people. I appreciate you, Harley. Oh, good. You and the LBS family. Uh, wonderful. Thank you. My first encounter with you is sure. It's a blessing. I've been hearing you on the air, and you are so unique. Thank you. Thank um, you. So much. Questions that you ask are so unique to our people. Sometimes they may not have the time to reach here. Yeah. to ask the question but these are sensitive issues that we hear within the corners of liberia so i appreciate you for the show good who is this in studio though i've been talking about it but just talk to your people who are you so um my name is representative augustine b Chiolo. i hear from lofa county to be precise salaried in Zozo district i represent the people of district five um lofa county and i have been opportune to be Part of the 55th legislature so uh, i'm there to represent my people to make sure that uh, those things that are in front of them, uh, being heard at the capitol building the more peace their representations and taking back information to them yep uh, prior to your entry to the legislature what have been your involvement in society uh, so i've been in the private sector i've been um, living private life and doing some businesses Though I come from the health background, uh, me and I have been involved in providing health services to the people of Liberia, um, have some clinics running, uh, have a volunteer job that I'm doing in 12 of the 15 counties in Liberia. And I carry on some, if, I mean, some procedures that are very unique to the health sector, and that is um, the transformation of children that are born with clubfoot. Uh, I provide a service in Liberia and I doing the free of charge. So I have it in most of the counties. And so I've been um, giving job employment to people who are found within the private sectors, in schools, in, uh, in a hospital, I mean, in a clinic. And also helping the less fortunate. And, you know, those children that are born with clubfoot um, mm -hmm. who are unable to go take treatment in Ghana or Nigeria, are treated right here in a very simple procedure. Are you specialized in that? Yes, I am a consulted doctor by profession. I'm a physician assistant, and I'm also having a health background as a um, public health technician. So these services I've been providing behind the scene, and uh, not many people know about it, but uh, I think um, it speaks for itself for those that we assist, those that we provide those services. For. With all of the services provided to uh, the people with the club food and all the thing, 
what did you get there? What did you get from them in response when you were actively involved? So I'm still active involved. In fact, um, this gave me the edge to do more services than I was doing before because I've been doing it on my own. Um, the fact that you can transform a child life, a child that was being uh, neglected, a child that was being abandoned by the community, now can be seen in society. There are a lot of them, over 3,000 plus, and we started uh, almost 10 years ago. We have been providing these services to the people. We are not been asking them for a dime. And they, it's because it's a passion I have for my career. And I feel that this is my own way of giving back to the people of Liberia. And more besides, not only Liberians, people come from Africa, people come from Guinea. Uh, we have a center in Ghana, I mean, or in Ghana, sorry, where people come from the Africa. So the reward is that thank you. And that thank you is more than any cash. Where have, uh, where have you been getting your support from? So I managed to have a link. Uh, the first thing the government of Liberia gave us space in the clinics, uh, though they are not providing anything in terms of cash or materials, but they allow us to work in the government institutions. So that is a plus. Um, I have a link with um, a partner in the United States called Miracle Feet. Miracle Feet um, is providing all of the raw material that we use for our children. And so, and uh, they have said in other countries, look, it's left with you to carry on the treatment. We can provide you the material that you can preview, I mean, you can produce. So that's an opportunity for us. And because of that, which is very expensive and they gave it to us free. So we performed um, the professional part free of charge. That's good. And let me say thanks ever so much for the services you provide for our people. Thank you. Who are suffering from these conditions. Mm -hmm. And let, let's look at your entry into the politics. You have been living a private life, doing all the private things, uh, helping your communities. Mm -hmm. What led you to have got into this entire politics? Something that keeps you, uh, your, something that keeps your feet to the fire, your hair getting gray sooner? <laughs> Definitely. And you know, um, normally when you work, you need to retire yourself. And so after you have worked for the community and, and, the, and the people found it prudent to reward you, then they ask you the petition you to say, look, we think you can you can do this for us. So so that what you have done on your own, um, you were going to do more. And I can I, I can assure you that the health center, because I'm in a house, I'm just taking my own time uh, bit by bit. We're going to make sure that uh, we work along with the Ministry of Health. We're going to make sure that we work with our colleagues, that our health sector can be rebranded, that our people can receive um, that necessary thing they need to receive from various hospitals and clinics. Our professional people will have to be respected. They will have to be recognized. So uh, I'm the more piece there for now. I think we are two professional people that are there. And I think we can work on as a team uh, to make sure that we give some backing to the Ministry of Health, to the health sectors. I heard somebody talking just now about uh, health workers mm -hmm. not being paid, they are being volunteer. Yeah. Look, uh, this is a joke. You can put professional people as a volunteer. They will not be committed to their job. So these are some of the flags we've been raising so that people can see reason that people who kill you, people who take you from your dying bear and elevate you should be respected too. We can continue to play on the nurses, the physician assisting, you know. So I believe that I would be, I would be a very much robust uh, lawmaker when it comes to preventing or defending my or my career. Is that is that the situation in in in, in Lofa County, your own district, your, your two districts you represent? Uh, I'm speaking nationally. I'm not only speaking about Lofa County. We will come to the national issue, but I'm I'm looking at from where you come. Uh, I'm going to the legislature now. Uh, what actually do you see in your district that you want to correct, that were not corrected in the past uh, regimes, and you want to correct as a lawmaker? Well, I don't want to say I'm going to co call, I mean, I'm going to correct it on my own. Mm -hmm. We're going to be a collective work we're going to do. Okay. In my district, when I first of all graduated, I decided to do a volunteer job in my in my own district for almost like five years. That's a salala. Salai. Uh, yes, that's a salala. I worked with the Zozo. Um, I worked with the county health team, volunteer that was in the 90s. And so uh, later on, I came back and uh, improved myself, got a degree, and went back and built a clinic because I felt that the government clinic were not to stand at that time post-war period. And so, yes, things are getting better, but uh, there are more to be done. Uh, there are nurses that are working with institutions that are not being paid. There are people who retired, and nurses have been retired, who don't get benefit. All right, people died on the job, and sometimes nothing much is being done because they are not capacitated financially. 
or to even give some services. So we want to make sure that we, we we look at this thing, not only from Zozo and Salary and but for Liberia as a whole. Mm. Yeah. You can have um, a nurse. Fire, fire starts from where it is before it spreads. Yeah, so yes. why, <laughs> why indeed we can be specific about us because when we speak about nurses, we're not going to say selectively, look, take care of Lofa Lofa. County and, and forget about Nima. No, I'm not going to do that. We're going to do it holistically. Your people need much from you. That was the reason they elected to you. Not yeah. because of your past activities, Definitely. but because they need more from you. Yeah. Where do you stand when it comes to health? I mean, agriculture, education, security, and the rest. You know, um, this government has a vision. They arrest. And uh, we all are flowing within the arrest. In the arrest, you have, everybody have a part to play. So um, it start with agriculture. Of course, Lofa County has been uh, classified as the breadwinner before. Mm. Today, and um, those names have never been aired again. I mean, it's, it's, it's dying gradually. So we are also working with agriculture ministry. We are working with institutions, a little institutions, to make sure that our people get back to the soil. But how can you get back to the soil when you don't have a good role? So role is a priority for now. Everyone was talking about role. So if our roles are good, then of course we can increase our agriculture system to a level where cars will be bringing goods from the villages to the market, right? So for 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 my district, for my county, mm. we are looking at road connectivity to be a priority for now. And because when you have a road access to road, like I said, you can do more agriculture work. You can even do reconciliation. Reconciliation comes when people are filled, when they have food to eat, when they are certified. In the absence of those things, it's difficult. So I know my I know the condition, and that's why where I am, I try to do studies on how to approach issue, not to just jump inside and can't leave. As I speak presently, we are working. We are working in our district. We are working. We are making sure that we may not provide all, but we provide some services that our people feel satisfied with. So you're telling us your district is not connected when it comes to road? Uh, in as much as the major road is not being paved, it's not being uh is not being pliable properly. Mm. Of course, you will not have those small feeder roads better because the best way to get to the village is to get to the main road. So I'm not saying it's badly like it was before, but we are talking about improving the system. And the last time I went, I I I, I put something on the floor uh, concerning the Banga Menikoma Highway, and to have cautioned the minister of 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 minister of public works why this rule have come to a standstill. Why, uh, since six years, this contract was signed, had not been completed. And the minister was very instrumental to tell us that, look, things are on course. And of course, I traveled to Vanjama, I traveled with the deputy speaker, I went to Kolahun. Yes, there are still some areas of mud, there are still some areas where car may hitch, but yet and still, we feel that things are getting better because the president told you, in a hundred days delivery, car will not stuck in the mud. Of course, that have been now, they the talk, the talk of the, the talk of the time. <laughs> but can somebody, Tell me from the day he made that statement up to today's date, 100 days is almost have elapsed, right? Mm. Yeah, I don't think many cars have got, gotten stuck in the Inclu month. Including your car, when you are on your way to Lofa. My car doesn't start because from here the salary is pliable, it's good. Mm. So I'm just saying that we are on course. Okay, let's look at education. How are your students in the district uh, coping with this? So... Um, this is one of the disheartening things that the government will have to put a feet high. Not only Lofa, as I speak to you, because if I have clinics in uh, 12 counties, understand that I travel in those counties too, I see, the, I see the need. Our clinic, the Minister of Health, I mean, Minister of, of Education, has to be very strong, strong indeed. And the fact that several someone can say they want to clean up the system, that's a very good thing that I think they have started with, because every institution is a mess up. Um, you have people floating, you have names floating that are not working, so you, you don't know where to start from. So you have a huge payroll that you cannot even contend with. Uh, the, the educational system in Lofa County, I must commend the private sector. Those that have private institutions, they are doing extremely well. And children are eager to go to school, but how well do they stay in school long? They don't stay school, in school up to around 10 o'clock. Most of these public buildings are empty. You understand? Because teachers are not being monitored. Teachers have to come go to Vonjama to get paid. Hey, we got to stop that. How much do you pay a teacher that you will take the teacher from Zozo to go to Vonjama to take pay? Um, That's uh, a very long distance. Very long distance. I'm grateful that they have a, a, a banking system now in Zozo that will ease the tension. But before then, 
you make barely like five to six thousand dollars. You gotta pay two to three thousand dollars to go get your pay. Sometimes you go to the system, you don't meet the, the person. The system is down. The system is down. Uh, that is that is not very good for our people. So it, it brings some some psychological mind uh, uh, disorder. Yeah. So I travel to a clan in Lofa County, the Blue Yama clan. I will always talk about the Blue Yama clan. It's a deserted clan. Is it in Salaye? It's in Zosa district. Zosa district. district. That's the that's the clan that has huge forest that uh company have been there over the years and have abandoned all their equipments. And they have only one clinic in that place. The rule is challenging. They have no school, you don't have a high school. So it's challenging. The, the educational system, the health system is challenging. And we are saying that we're gonna speak about it all of the time. We're gonna make sure. We talk to our ministers. We're going to make sure the president listen to our voice because this is why we ran on his party ticket we won. And so they can give us a listening ear. Our people need attention. Maria base, we are here. But the people on our side, how do they go to work when they don't get paid? How do students even go with no benches in the school? You don't have water system. So these are issues that I think are confronting our people. And uh, in my own mind, mm. We are going to be talking about it gradually. We're going to resolve it. Now, with all of these things you're talking about, um, they are they are all spread across the country, not just Lofa, like you said. Yeah. Uh, you you chairing several committees, uh, or you co-chairing several committees in the in the legislature, House of Representatives. Um, what what do you put forth uh, before your colleagues uh, in terms of deliberations uh, to better up some of these challenges that are hindering our country? So um I'm I'm a co chair to a committee. What and, is that? and um I'm a co chair to labor. Okay. okay, and then um I'm a member of HEF. But uh let me be very frank to you. Mm. You see, committees are the will and pleasure of the speaker. Um that is he puts you on committees that he wants to put you on. And um, I feel like in the House of Parliament, committees, people are not put on committees based on their qualifications. People are placed on committees based on the desires of the speaker, which he has absolute power to do that, as equal to the president who has the power to appoint ministers, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm placed on a labor committee as a co-chair. I say thank you for that. And we are working. And that's why labor issues we have been trying to handle gradually. We have institutions that we have heard about bad labor practices. We have invited them and tried to make sure that they do the rightful things. And so you will start hearing that things are gradually improving. It won't just start today and ends today. On health, yes, I'm on the health committee and my chair presence is Honorable Judy Weir. Uh, we are working together. We're going to work together to make sure that those things that we know- and in Judy Weir is from Lofa. She is from Lofa. She is the chair on health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, she is also the head, uh, the chair on the Ways and Means Committee for for Lofa County. That's fine. Um, so we are going to be um, giving her information that can help improve the health system. Um, that can that can make sure that um, our people know that we are informed of their plight. So, besides labor, I'm also on gender committee. Um, um, gender committee. I'm on a peace building committee as member. The AHA committee that I chair as co-chair is the one on wax, which is very good. Water, I'm, sanitation yeah, I'm so much interested in that much because- You're from the health background. Yeah, and so the reason why I have an interest is that um, our community, like our schools, you have a school that is about 15 or 20 minutes walk from the main town in the Leeward County. You don't have a hand pump. You don't have latrine. And so we're talking about um, these common diseases that can be Prevent it easily when we get the access of this and we get access to these things. These are things that we don't have access to. So I'm there because it's like uh, my chairman, uh, Honorable Tamo Gozo, who is a very instrumental gentleman. We are working together, and I think that the the, the WAS committee will be one of the best committee that I will ever work with. You 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 are all strategic committees, though you co-chairing, but your 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 advocacy or your points proffer uh, can help for the chairs of these committees to listen to you and and put forth uh, to uh, before your your, your 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 colleagues for deliberations. For. Defin definitely, mm -hmm. because definitely. of your experience. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's why I said all these committees are good for me because I I, I feel that I can still have an input and uh, committee chairs are I I chair people that are pressing that. 
we are very close to one another. You know, Julie and I are from Lofa County. We just make a tour a few days with the deputy speaker as a caucus, mm -hmm. just to assess and acquaint ourselves with situations that are, affect, that are affecting our people in Lofa County, so that when it comes to the budget, we can be able to have an input. Let's look at gender. This is a very sensitive issue. Uh, you, I, on this committee as a member, um, the issue about uh, this rip, girls, adolescent girls, uh, babies are being tempered with, are being, are being abused on a daily basis by unscrupulous individuals. Yeah, Prior to your entry to the legislature, you heard about them and you're still hearing about them. What are you, what is your tip on this? So, um, we have a strong, powerful cheerleader and um, I can I can assure you that uh, the librarians going to get our backing on people that are found guilty of sexual act and is condemning that people will be ripping. Uh, people should have the opportunity to live freedom. But most of our guys who in fact are being taken from rural area of Brotherhood Monrovia are living on on stress. And so, and then besides that, the poverty rate that we have, that we even want, uh, send our children into the street to sell on an age, it's not also very good for us. I think there should be some some policies, some rules put into place that we can stop girls children, not only girls children, but girls and boys on an age to start selling, selling time after sexual, selling in the street. Selling in the street, yeah, selling in the street. You 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 kind of expose the girls, you kind of expose the children, not even girls, mm -hmm. because in as much as the person going start playing with money, and maybe for any reason they misplace that money and they want to get that money back, they see them shit. I mean, crying. Somebody take advantage of them. So we should find the preventive methods. How can we prevent these children to not be abused? Then people that are found guilty of this act, I think I think there are, there are penalties both put on the book for them. Before finding the penalties for people who will be involved or who are getting into these unscrupulous uh, attitudes, yeah. um, what are the preventive measures as a legislator you think can be put into place to uh, minimize uh, these acts? So like I just told you, um, parents should be able to prevent their children from going to the street. Parents are saying the, the kids are the ones that can bring the food back home. Uh, so uh, that's the kind of system. If you have a if you have if you have a blind woman, yeah, and you see them most often in the streets of Monrovia with the kids behind them. And it shouldn't be so. So how do we they have manage? The, we have we have the group of some the someone which is uh the first lady should be chair of that. I don't know much about it, but I think these people should not be found in the street. It, it hurt me when I see blind person in the street and I see the daughter behind her or the son behind her uh, begging for money. They are still vulnerable. They are still vulnerable. Besides being raped, a car will knock them down. Sure. So we need to find a means. Uh, there should be the appropriate means. And that's so why we're just about three months in the house, like I told you. We are gradually taking time to assess, to see as to whether how best we can approach some issue. Because you want to approach an issue where your colleagues will buy the idea, not just putting things on the floor. Uh, so I personally feel that uh, they are allowed to be done from the parents and the parents should be educated. Don't allow your child to go in the street alone. Don't allow your child to sell. These things, when the messages from your radio, your jingles are playing, that people understand the consequences. When you do this, this will happen to you. I believe it will also serve. Besides that, in school, okay, at what time do we allow our children to go to school, to come from school? Do we check them up? I mean, children are now becoming loose. Oh, I'm a father of many girls' children. Come to my house and see. My girls and myself at right at my house after six o'clock. We stayed on to the next day. Though there are some time you will give some leniency to them to be mm -hmm. people children go on the beaches who have control on them. Who do you hold responsible? That's a dangerous spot. Yeah, who do you hold responsible? You hold the parents responsible. You hold the government. Government should put a regulation that these children are manners should not go on the beach. These children are manners that should not sell. You are not a breadwinner for your father. Your father is a breadwinner for you. Turn it around. Because the, the father is nowhere around. You see, well, you see, you see men just impregnate women and they escape because of responsibilities. That's why the education has to go on and on. It's all about educating our people. It's all about sitting down under the Palawa hut and telling them the consequences of these things. And because we come from war and things have been very difficult, that's why things are happening. But gradually with this government, as we go into the first year, the second year, you will see that not many things that are happening now will happen again. Trust me.
In, 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 do you think uh, with all of what you're talking, because this thing about the advocacy from lawmakers, it's been happening in the past, 51st, 52nd, 53rd, 54th, uh, lawmakers been talking about these same things that you are talking about today as a lawmaker in the 55th legislature. And the implementation aspect was like lacking. Uh, they just talk about it because they want to blow their political trumpets. At the end of the day, they play the interests of the people very low. Are you one of such lawmakers, sir? Yeah. I do agree with you uh, that what happens in the past will not be the scene of today. The 54th is different from the 55th. And I can tell you, I have listened to my colleagues, I have sat down, Kenya, I have watched people speaking, uh, making deliberation on the floor. I know who they are. And so we have gone over there with a mindset. We are not going there as a political party. We have gone in our house as lawmakers for Liberia, for Liberians. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to defend our party, uh, what party we come from, how we can be boastful and show no. I'm not in for that. And that's why uh, I feel that um, we have a speaker who's listening, we have a speaker who has eyes he can see, and he has a sense of ability when he thinks, see things going wrong, he call your name strictly. So I try to admire him, but I still have to go the longer way to see. You still watch the speaker? I still have to watch him. But do you have some tete -tete with him? Most oh, of yes. Them? Yes, we move to, to the speaker office. We speak to him once in a while. I have my own obligation. I have my own job mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So once in a while, yes, you go, you pay your respect. Because he, the speaker is just a representative for one district who just like you. Definitely. And we all are hanging on him. <laughs> He's the father. He's the father. Twin, twin, twin mother. Yeah. Why he has a personal responsibility, he still takes the responsibility of everyone else. And I think he's trying to pass Let's look this. at the respect uh, in, in, the, in the House of Representatives for each other, each member of you. How is that working? Is it, it, are there due diligence for each of you from your colleagues? Yes, you know, um, because you people are the face of the country. Yeah, and we, if, if you are divided on some issues, yes, of course, legislatively, no, there can not. be some uh, divisions and all the things. But we're talking about pushing some argument and you see people coming to knock you down, hold your clothes. Right there. Do you see that in the capital? And you know, we all come from diverse backgrounds, we all come from different norms, different community, different religious backgrounds. We all conglomerate at our house, so you find attitude to be different. Some attitude, I may frown at it, but then when I look at it, that is a general thing, I accept it. Mm -hmm. Because you can restrict your colleagues in there. Uh, everything is done by rules and law, right? And I think we are proceeding right. Maybe we came just there and we saw people behaving. We said, ah, this is how the horse is noisy. But I don't think the horse is noisy. Because um, it's about arguments, it's about debate, it's about lobbying. And so people will want to win and they will have to move from one place to another to talk to their colleagues. I know there are sometimes people become disgruntled, sorry to say, people uh, will have emotionally expressing themselves, but the speaker understands that we are human. Sometimes people say silent, it doesn't mean they don't want to talk. What is that? They try to imagine how can this young man be behaving this way? Well, every time he enters the parliament, his name is ringing and he's not doing anything much better than anybody can do. But again, like I said, we all come from different communities. Now, are you one of those person, uh, those persons who who usually take on the stage in the in the in the, in the House of Representatives, to to point on something to the speaker to recognize uh, a certain burning issue? Not really. Uh, but so you see, um, people flow on speaker bay. I mean, people fl float on the f on, on the floor. Mm. Uh, based on the issue, based, based on the issues and uh, how well they are informed of it. Yeah. So you're not going to jump into something that you don't have knowledge of. And people who have been there, even those who came, there are people who are far sighted in uh, raising their hand, which is, which is good. And if they raise the issues that I had on mine, I don't need to go after it. Sure. So the only thing I know is that we all have to vote. So in everything, it's about voting. It's not about how well you talk, but how people uh, defend you in your in your vote that they gave you their vote. That well, I see myself that there are issues that I may not vote for, there are issues that I may vote for. And, uh, Honorable Representative, um, uh, uh, let's look at the issue of drugs, the mm. infiltration of drugs in Liberia. This is something that, 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 that is hampering the growth of this nation. A lot of young people are dying on a daily basis. Mm. What is your take on this? It is sad. It is sudden, but let me commend um, the director who has just took over and tried to unveil some hidden era arresting some drugs. I want to say congratulations to him. We have to be proactive. The drugs are not coming from anywhere. It's coming from we ourselves. The drugs are not coming from the kids. It comes from well-educated, well, -educated, well 
uh, people that are established in society. You understand? So the security apparatus has to be proactive on how drugs enter this country. I had just been informed that even there are some part of Liberia like, people are growing the marijuana. Mm. Why should this happen? In your constituents as a lawmaker, you should be able to flag this up. I'm not in Kipman. I'm not in Bomi. You will raise re-election. Definitely. If, 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 that if, would if you raise the issue, you'll be taking business from others. If that would make you And your re-election will be dangling. It doesn't matter. That's why you don't you don't depend on one thing. Uh, it's an opportunity giving you. It's not a left-hand job. So if you speak for the truth and the truth throw you out, that's fine. So I, I take this thing to be very serious. Look at our children that are in the street. Look at how many of them, young guys, young boys that are walking, sleeping. And yeah, we take it for a joke. I think the president stood well when he said, we all should do our drugs test. And I say for my psyche, they have not done mine. Mm. And I think it's necessary. People in the house say they, don't, they, they can't take a drug test. No, who are you? Remember, you are under a lord. You need to respect your leader. In as much in your consequence, you want to put a respect to you, you should respect your leader. So if the president say, everybody, follow and take a drug test, we should submit to it. Because if we want to go against illicit drug in Liberia, then we all have to fight it together. So I'm one of those who totally against it. And uh, I don't see that I will find any hidden area around my community and I can't inform the police about what, it. What sort of negative image does this drug infiltration bring uh, to Liberia, to the Osa world? So you see, when you have majority of the youth that are not doing anything, so you find that bulk of the youth are not educated, bulk of the youth are found in criminal activities, it's not good for us. It's not healthy for us. So even if the investors come, they will be afraid of a lot of the youth because they feel that um, they are vulnerable to them. Uh, they could do anything when they're taking these drugs. So everywhere that you have drugs is a threat to nation building. Everywhere. Even to the very home that you are in is a threat. Where those, where those guys, where these guys are, are sleeping in that community, people, pe people, people live in fear. So uh, we all have to fight it. We all have to do everything we can do possible to make sure that we try to minimize. It's a gradual process. People have been addicted to it. Like you said, people live on it, but that's not the best way to sustain your family. What, what kind of measure, harsh measure, you think is needed uh, for those that are drinking in these uh, substances to destroy the young generation? I'm sure there are rules on the book for it. I mean, I have gone to, to read in, but I'm sure there are, there are um, there are charges for those people who are found guilty. Um, so we go by the book. Whosoever that is found guilty or anything in Liberia, look, don't just look at somebody and you try to accuse them because of their look until you go through investigation. You cannot do nothing for that person. So the laws are there. If you are caught with marijuana, what should be done to you? It's there written. I can't tell you even now, but I know Liberians during the past regime, during past lawmaker days, they have put something on the floor that we all will be looking at we, to, we to are, make sure that we enforce it. We are good at putting the, 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 the real things on the paper, uh, but we, we, we are like lazy in implementing them. This, Why do you think this is happening? Um, this is happening is because, it because of compromise or love, yeah. love for one another. That's not love for one another. That just corrupted. Um, let me be very frank to you. When the president uses this statement again, not business as usual, it's one of the talk of the time. So you arrested, you went to my home on a children's house and you found out that you found drugs. What do you do with him? Because he's a lawmaker, he should face the full weight of the law. I know you were asking me about the war crime code. Of course. Of we course. will get there before we open the Yeah. <laughs> so I know you're going to ask me, but let me just tell you. Why are we, why did I sign the resolution? I was here the other day, I asked the journalist, do we have a police station in Liberia? He said, yes. Do we have a courtroom in Liberia? He said, yes. We had, um, what is Philmon's jail we had in Lofa County? I just forget it. Was it Babalu? No. Um, yeah, we had one there, Bere Yella. Why oh. we had it there before? Well, for notorious people that were caught carrying on mayhem. So the war crime code is not only for today. It's for tomorrow, the next generation to come. It serves as a signal for those who feel they can invade Liberia any kind of way they feel like. Because you are hurt, you take gun, you enter the bush. No, 
you're going to face the full weight, the full weight of what you have done. So you you sign a I resolution did. with your with your with your mind, with your entire uh, mind. Even if I were not to be elected and the brother in the community, I was going to sign it. Mm. Mm -hmm. What's your target for signing such resolution? It's to put stop to this mayhem. Is to put stop to people enriching themselves unfairly. So if you sign this resolution, you like you did already, and you were being caught in the web, I, I be penalized. I will be penalized. I'm one of those who maybe I may not be hundred percent, but I like straightforward things. Were you here during the war? I live all of my life during the war. Yeah. Did I fight the war? No. <laughs> how? How do you exonerate yourself? Ah, because uh, you are not before the court of competent jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I know I'm not. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Even people that we we thinking of, they will be guilty. They may not be guilty. People that we don't think about being guilty, they will be guilty because it depends on how you're going to defend yourself. It depends on um, evidence people have on you. So I think my survivability is large in the hands of God. Uh, I'm a Christian, and I believe that God will go. All things are possible. Well, listen to us if you just joined us this morning. We are, we are hosting the representative of Lofa County District Number Five. He's Honorable Augustine B. Chiwulo of uh, Lofa County. Of course, he's my guest on the Super Morning Show this morning. I know Lofa people are listening, and you want to form part of the discussion. Liberians are listening because he's not just there as a representation for Lofa County or Salaye or Zozo District, but he's there as a representation for the entire Liberia. So. He's the guest this morning on the show, and those of you watching us online from across the world, uh, thanks ever so much for following us on our Ellen TV page, our social media page. It's good that uh, Honorable Chewulu has come to talk about his involvement into the legislature, especially the 55th legislature. So if you are out there and you want to form part of the discussion, all I need from you is civility because civility matters a lot. Respect a leader today, tomorrow they will respect you when you, you get to the leadership. So let's have a uh, conversation now. Zero, uh, it, uh, zero, it, it, zero, five, one, four, zero, nine, six. 0880-514-096 or 077 uh, Let's go to the line and speak with this person. Good morning. Oh, this person. Uh, oh, okay. 08 Let me take it from this line. Uh, you can also call me on this alternative, on these alternative lines. 0880-514-096, uh, 0880-514-096 or 0775978530 or 0886-324740. Let me see if I can get this person. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Mr. Newman calling for rehab. Oh, oh, go ahead. You come in very. Uh, I don't know where you are. Yes, I don't know. But I just want to say thanks to the honorable in the in the in the studio and even you, because some of us just like him, I was in Malaysia and witnessed the war from start to finish. Even to the point that the last one when I came down Malaysia in any year again, and so we can see our society with our children, and it's because the way things. The war was uh, perpetrated, and then there was no uh, punishment for anybody. So then, uh, they, they just feel that when well, you can do anything, and you can go into it, and you can live in a civil war like that. No. All the countries around are all making progress, and we are just like, mm. we're well, losing the whole world. Okay. So I'm so happy that the president should move forward with it. And there should be a corporation on this thing. You should not be something who just sit on their back this time. And as a result of that, nothing uh, came out of it. They went around here and then put it on the shelf. It should not be that way. Okay. Let it be implemented so that Liberia can rise. We will show Liberia when we are coming up. This is not a fun thing. Thank you. Don't try it. We have to make progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Oh, we can. We can go ahead. Yes. Okay. I, I don't know. But well, let's take this uh, break quickly and get back. Thank you, Westwood. Thank you, Westwood. Thank 
Now, of course, uh, we are sorry, you know, <laughs> these are these are technical equipment we're working with, but uh, we will take the few calls and uh, our, our our representative will address the, uh, the few concerns. 0885140960, 0885140960, or zero. Uh, okay, let me speak with this person. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. You? Morning. Yeah, my, my name is Arthur Fumba. Um, I call to congratulate uh, Sheolo, um for his good work in the district. I'm from the Zozo district. I thank him for all of what he did, especially as he talked on the Buddha my client. Uh, we want to be thankful that we have um, these leaders that have a listening ear, thank God, along even what he's talking about the speaker. And we are all open to work along, bring ideas, team with him to bring the we really want to congratulate him for being the one leader to lead us, and we are all open to work with him. So as we move on, whatever we can do, he continue to support every work we do, and we call on all Liberians, all people from Lofa to support the work of Amarwa Chewuro. Thank you. Thank you. We will take a few calls quickly because it's 9 o'clock, and next guest will be in here. Morning. Good morning. This is Daniel K. Johnson, and I join you from my wrestling district four. Let me thank you all so much for the deliberation. I think elections are over, and this is time we join our hands together to rebuild district five. But I want to ask you, honorable these uh, few questions. You talk with the deputy speaker in Lofa. So, uh, what do we have on the table for the current region hospital budget? What do we expect? And my next question is. Uh, the issue of less fortunate young people is not limited to Morovia. We have similar things in Zorzo. What are mechanisms put in place to help to you know, build the capacity of young people in the district? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Good morning. Quickly, we don't have time, please. Oh, he's he left the line. <laughs> he left. Yeah, I yeah, so let, let, let me take the last person, Honorable. I know you're going to the session. Morning. Good morning. Morning. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Steve Patrick Pewey, and I do join you from my Supreme Resident District 4. Uh, two sons of Lofa is from Social District, specifically by a quarter on the yellow road. And let me say good morning to my Honorable. Uh, honorable Chiro, for oh. some of us, we know how you were elected. One of the two sons of Sosa, and we know your ability. But they say you are in a legislator, most especially one of the regions that some of us were yummy and dreaming for in the future that have come to us. Mm -hmm. But Honorable Chihuahua, please, a lot of districts in one of the most relevant and one of the interested districts in the faculty that is combined with salary and Sosa. Mm -hmm. So I want you to look at it clearly and to push some agenda because we want for our district now to be rather nice into. Two now because Salah alone can stay by itself and Sosa alone can stay by itself. 
not just two days will be combined and with one representative. Sometimes some development cannot go all across. That okay. place is highly populated. And when you to push an open bill, Thank you, thank you. You made your points, uh, honorable. Uh, just address a few concerns, then give us your party comments. I know you I pressed with time. You, you need to go to Capitol. Your colleagues are preparing for deliberations. Thank you. Uh, let me say thanks to all our callers, uh, honorable Fumban. I want to say thank you so much. Uh, Daniel also spoke about the deputy speaker, and I, I let me say this. The Lofa County caucus will be a different caucus in the 55th. Uh, so we are jointly working together regardless of our our political affiliation. So uh, we travel with our deputy speaker uh, because he is next in command for us. We are blessed that Lofa County produced the president and produced the deputy speaker. We are proud of that. So we give everyone of them equal respect. And so um, we travel with him. I know he has an agenda while he was traveling, but we were traveling together as a team so that we can assess and pay a visit to our people after the election to tell them thank you and to also see their needs so that when we come to budget here and we'll be able to plug in something for the district. Current hospital is on course. We all are concerned about current hospital. The only referral hospital in Zosa and Salary. Everybody, lawmakers, the Senate, they all are involved. We are we, we have been talking about it. Less fortunate people is all over. That's why we spoke holistically about those mm. in Monrovia and all over. So whatever is being done in Monrovia, definitely will have to be done in all other counties. Mr. P, we thank you. Uh, the issue of dividing the district, it takes time. The government, it has to be legislation. So we will gradually get there. We are just a few months, but it is on the minds of everybody. And so let me speak specifically about salary in Zaza district. The district is doing very well. We, we, have, we have started engaging our district um, in terms of reconciliation. You know, after election, uh, we are divided. Mm -hmm. Everybody go with sour mind. So taking in the race, one person won. Uh, I think it's about time that we reconnect ourselves. We come together. Even those that have been there before, those that were defeated before, we'll make sure that we bring all of our ideas. And one person I must come in here is Honorable Fuma. He always called to tell me, Mr. Chiobro, anything you want me to do, let me do it. Because we are fighting for one district. So let me say congratulations to the leadership. Our local leadership have been established, have been confirmed. They were nominated and confirmed. So we have a full string leadership now in Zozo and Salary. So that makes the way easier. We have a commissioner. Uh, we have a city mayor. Fortunately for us, the superintendent came from our district. We want to say superintendent, lovely massacre, congratulations. And the job have just started. So um, if you ask about parting statement, maybe, but you owe me some meanings, 15 minutes. We... <laughs> <laughs> we will actually try to rearrange her for your for my 15 minutes. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we so we, we will call you back here, honorable. Thank you. Um, if I will be putting in a bill, that's one thing you should ask me. I'll be looking at the school of physician assisting where I came from at my alma mater. Because this is an institution that has served the Liberian people. Uh, you know the doctors next to the doctors are the physician assisting the nurses follow. Uh, this school stay giving people diplomas. After all the years or three years, you go for training, you go for schooling, you come back with a diploma. We are going to be pushing, lobbying our college to elevate this school to a bachelor degree level, if possible, a master degree level. So that our college cannot be perpetually when you go apply, they say, who are you? Say, you are a diploma holder. And of course, you are qualified. You do minor surgery. So we are going to be pushing this one of these days. Let me say thanks if I will be saying a parting statement. I have a very huge thanks to the Liberian National Police uh, for, for the form and manner in which our traffic has been controlled. I mean, I'm just much amazed about it. We never knew that there are, there are not very huge traffic we have as they have been. So I want to say congratulations to the IG um, for his powerful work and again to LBS. Today, you are most famous. Uh, I'm one of those who never turned into ELBC before. Let me be very frank to you. Today, I'm admiring because the kind of program you have, the kind of way your messages are going, I think you are winning the minds of your listeners. So I say congratulations and to everybody, all librarians, we need to work together. This is about unity. In the absence of unity, this government will not go anywhere. So I want to say thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable you are much Chiwolo. Appreciated. So when, uh, when are you going to Lo-Fi again? Because you were there for almost a week. Today. <laughs> Today. Tomorrow holiday. I know, you're going for your <laughs> agriculture break? No. You, you get farm there? <laughs> We're talking about that. Okay, thank you so much. He's <laughs> Honorable you. Augustine B. Chewolo, representative of uh, of Electoral District Number 5 in Lofa County. He's been my guest on the first lap of the program this morning. We will have another time with the lawmaker. Oh. You know,
know they are based most often to capital up capital hill so we just pick chance to get him here so we will rearrange and get him here so that we talk more my name is melvin i'll be back at nine